Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Lazy Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Sam Priestley, and as always, we're joined by my lovely wife, Emma. Hello! It's currently Christmas Eve here at Priestley Towers, and as normal when it comes to this time of year, we're not doing much work. We're spending a lot of time eating and drinking, getting ready for family to arrive, and I'm spending a lot of time thinking about how the year's gone, thinking about what I want to change in the year to come. And inevitably, thinking about my flaws. I have quite a few flaws, uh, but perhaps the biggest one, and sort of the reason this podcast is named what it is, is that I am naturally just incredibly lazy. (laughs) That's why it's the lazy entrepreneur. Uh, And the other reason it's called the lazy entrepreneur is that I credit a lot of my early success to being lazy. And that fear of having to get a real job, fear of not having control over my own time. I was never particularly motivated by money. I was more motivated by not wanting to get up in the morning, not wanting to work for someone else, um, wanting to like lie in bed and play video games. I was pretty bad at school. But I didn't do very well because just the whole being there, nine to five, didn't sit very well to, with me. I missed a lot of school because I, well, I felt I'd wake up in the morning feeling ill and dreading the day and then getting a few days off university was great for me because there was no attendance requirements at our university and I was able to skip as much as I wanted provided when it came to the exam time I sort of put in that 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 final bit of work and that worked very well for you it worked very well for me yeah yeah did you did your friends talk about the fear uh, like just before coursework deadline is due in and people haven't started doing doing the coursework yeah absolutely yeah I mean uh, me and my close friends are very much the kind of people that would do a bit of work all the time because we're very motivated. Yeah, but of course you are. I would say that was a bit of a um, a stereotype for my course because I did sociology, so it's kind of little and often. Whereas um, I'd say the stereotype of computer science students like yourself is very much do- waiting till the deadline to make you a bit of a kick up the arse and do some work. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'd probably agree with that. It's strange, isn't it? Like, what is it about that, the pressure of the deadline? Like, why do we not feel the pressure when the deadline's not there? I mean, you, you obviously do. There's something you obviously do little often. Why is it that other people will happily not even think about the coursework till it's in due in in like 12 hours' time and still get all the coursework in? It's not like I'd end up not doing it. It was just that there was something about that needing that fear to kind of motivate me. Well, I think it's because they could. They didn't have anyone checking up on you saying, how's your coursework getting on? Can I see 50% of it? It's different for a dissertation, but for all other types of work at university, you kind of were, it was your own responsibility to get it done in your own time. So what you're saying is they expected you to be responsible adults. Yes. And I wasn't, and I'm still not. (laughs) (laughs) Or that they um, gave the responsibility to choose how you got the work done. Yeah. I remember uh, the the moment I decided that I was going to be an entrepreneur, I was filling in uh, graduate application forms for banks in London. I don't know why I was choosing banks. Um, and each, each bank, even though, you're, even though they all know you're applying to... 20 30 40 of them it's a numbers game you just apply to loads of them they would always like get you to write 200 words about why you've chosen them in particular or what it is about their firm that you really like you had these huge huge forms to fill out and i just couldn't face it and more than that i couldn't face the idea that that would be real life that kind of waiting the fear of the deadline doesn't work in real life you can't just cruise by and hope to do things last minute in the real world you've got to got to show up you've got to turn up and you've got to you've got to work and so i shut my laptop and decided that i was going to find some other way to to not do it uh luckily i had a a way to make money at the time it wasn't a good one but i i determined to push it as much as i could which was match betting and i've done a lot of podcast on that you can listen to if you want and and that re- worked really well for me so that 
that fear then got me working much harder than I would have done uh, if I'd been working a normal job, I reckon. It's like that, it's like that just before the deadline of coursework where these lazy people who spent the last month not doing anything will be working, pulling 12 hours, 14 hours, all nighters to get the work done. They end up working really, really hard. Now you extend that over this like constant background fear of having to get a job, having to, it's something about getting up in the morning that I, I really rub me the wrong way. (laughs) And still does. Still does. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a morning person and the world's not set up for evening people, for night people. Um, and that worked really well. And particularly because what I was doing, match betting and then the gambling and stuff like that, I always kind of assumed it was going to fall apart and it wasn't going to work out. So even though I started earning quite good money, I still had that fear in the back of my mind motivating me to start new things, to try harder, to build up as much savings as possible. So I, I just assumed at some point it would all fall apart and I'd have to get a job. And I really didn't want that. Um... But that changed, as things do, as the years went by and I built up more savings and I started building multiple income streams and had other stuff going on. I That fear started to lessen and the kind of the late, like the unproductivity of the laziness um, sort of crept back in. In 2014, I made quite a big decision, which was to quit my businesses that were earning me a lot of money and just focus on on the stuff that would pay well sorry just focus on the stuff that I enjoyed so that was writing the blog playing table tennis uh, then it was making gin now it's doing this podcast people like at the time were very keen on saying stuff like follow your passion do stuff that you enjoy and you'll never work a day in your life that was kind of my thought was that I made a bit of money but I still wanted to be doing productive stuff you know, the, the view I had, I was, I was very into um, self-improvement, becoming a better person. But I thought, oh, I just, I don't, not that fussed about the money. Let's just focus on actual, something where I'm creating something that's more fulfilling and it's something I actually enjoy doing. The problem is, is that when people say follow your passion, they assume you're like a an artist who's happy to whose who's ideal day is sat in front of their canvas working all day on that. Well, actually, my passion is probably eating pizza and playing video games <laughs> and lying <laughs> on the sofa. I enjoy doing the business. I enjoy doing the blog. I enjoy making gin. I, enjoy, I, I really enjoy doing this podcast and talking about whatever it is I'm thinking of. But like, I will normally just take the, the easiest route through things, which is often not doing very much. I'm, I'm very happy lying on the sofa watching TV. I mean, that hasn't been the case for all of your businesses. It hasn't been the case for everything, but it... I would say the Wren in particular. That was a lot of work. Uh, yeah, I mean, there was a time that was kind of still at that kind of fear level where I was doing 101 things at the same time. Yeah, and working I mean, quite hard on all of them. Specifically on the setup. Side. Set up, Obviously, once it was up and running, there was less things for you to do all the time. The Ren is a coffee shop I started in 2013, maybe. Yeah. 2013. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a problem that I come to every year. And I try and, like, change something about my life. Uh, what can I do to make myself a bit more productive, to be a bit, bit less lazy and get more done? And it kind of changes my my solution. I think it evolves over time. I'll try something that'll work for a while, then it'll stop working, and I'll try something else. Um, I suppose what I should really mention is though is what is wrong with being lazy, like what is wrong with just spending all day lying on the sofa eating pizza and watching watching films. <laughs> well, I guess it to most people it depends how often you're doing it. Yeah, it's all very well to spend. Saturday and Sunday, that's the norm to be chilling out, whether that's spending time socialising or whether that's being on your own and recharging, that's kind of seen as normal. Mm. But actually, in our lives, we'd work on the weekends as well. So there has to be some leisure or downtime. Yeah. But 
I guess people would would judge you spending weeks on end on the sofa yeah. eating pizza. You'd probably judge me too. <laughs> I'd judge myself. And I think that's part of it. It's the guilt of not doing anything productive. I'm, when we stopped being digital nomads, which basically meant we were travelling full time, one of the reasons was that I didn't feel like 20-something-year-olds should be just having fun all the time. They should be trying to build something, trying to create something. And when I look at my life objectively, that is what I want. I say I want to, I'm competitive, I want to achieve things, I want to create things, I want to um, I want to develop myself personally, I want to change the type of person I am and grow uh, long term. But if you ask me what I want to do right now, <laughs> it will often be, well, I quite fancy getting a pizza <laughs> watching a, watching some Netflix. I think another element to it is that um, the side of being an entrepreneur that you, one of the things you really enjoy is the coming up with lots of new ideas and the strategy. And actually that requires a lot of thinking time. Yeah. And I think you underestimate how much... Uh, when you're lying on the sofa eating pizza you are also thinking about how to improve your businesses new businesses new ideas yeah that's true that's true um i do a monthly blog post where i write about how the month has gone before and one of the metrics i track is how many hours i've worked and i do that as a percentage of what a normal person would have worked so against like a 40 or 50 hour working week um but that doesn't include kind of downtime thinking time. Yeah. That doesn't include other productive stuff, which I have got better at, like um, jujitsu. Um, spend a lot of time on that a week. It doesn't include the other kind of productive stuff, which I'd include, like uh, socialising and keeping up with friends, um, things like that. So there is more to it than that. And I'm not saying I'm terrible. Like, I am, I am good. And each year... I get better at some things and, and worse at others. But also, it's so part of it is changing the kind of carrot and sticks mm. that I'm giving myself. What does good look like for you at that, that point in time? Yeah. Yeah. And part of it is um, is changing my goals. Maybe I achieve something. And like, so at one point, I looked at my kind of, on my blog, I was reading my blog post on, on the page and it, and it gave my what I wanted to achieve in, uh, for the next year and this was written somewhere mid 2017 I think and it was launch a gym brand yeah done help you launch your um, supper clubs done yeah it was uh, do jujitsu regularly three or four times a week done yeah um, and there was only one other one which I've actually forgotten where it was now <laughs> But I'd actually achieved most of them. That's really good. And like, it's not um, its not to say that I don't produce a lot. I think most people, when they look at like kind of the output of what I'm producing, like, so I once wrote a blog post on laziness about three years ago, and I kind of got two reactions. Either people being, I totally get it, or people being like, what are you talking about? You work really hard. You, yeah. You're doing loads. You're running like six businesses. What are you talking about? Like they're... They're polarising. They're polarising. And just, and like you're not seeing the day to day. And I do often look back and think, you know, what could I have achieved if I was, if I was being as productive as I am, but working the same number of hours as everyone else, as people do in a normal job? Yeah, I think that a lot as well, particularly with the gin, um, because it's been so successfully locally. A lot of people ask us, is this your full time job? Mm. And I find that a really difficult question to answer because in comparison to my job at PwC, absolutely not. It's not full time because I spend a fraction of the hours on the gin that I do that I did working at PwC. But it's you're looking at it completely differently. It's um like the productivity at PwC is not the same as having your own gin brand. Yeah. And therefore, how do you measure that? Is it just purely on hours you've spent or is it what you're producing? Yeah. Or is it the service or the product you're producing? Yeah. And that's very difficult to measure. It is difficult to measure. And I think I, for a while, I thought that there was kind of an inverse correlation. Like the, 
the harder you worked, the less you could produce per hour. It was almost like I only had so much energy for kind of um, hard work and creativeness, and that could only be limited to a few hours a day. Yeah. But I, I, I do believe that, but I also believe that with practice, you can, you can increase that, and that actually if you are putting in quite a lot of hours, um, you will you will increase your kind of um, your energy levels for that type of work. Well, yeah, and also something that um, you haven't been doing very much in Tunbridge Wells, but you kind of taught me when we were being digital nomads and travelling, is that when you get in the zone, you just go with the flow and you keep working. Yeah, yeah. You don't do that very much now because we're in a bit more of a routine. Yeah. Because um, your, I call it your golden hour, really is kind of midnight onwards. Yeah. Whereas our life, you need to sleep so that you can get up and, and be productive in the morning. Yeah. Or get up and lie in in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've usually got something on in the morning, even if it is 11. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's one of the things about being married, isn't it? Having having two different... So you're very routine orientated. You, yeah. you function best with routine. Yeah. I function best without a routine and kind of embracing whatever mood i'm in yeah and leveraging that to the max yeah and one day you could wake up being like well i i need to chill today i just can't do any work and the next day you could work for two days straight yeah i think looking back um it's not when i when i think about what i could have achieved if i'd been working as hard as everyone else i don't think about how much money i could make i think about the personal development that I've kind of missed out on. That's really interesting. I don't think most people would think like that. No. Well, I don't think, I think a lot of people don't really believe in personal development. They don't, they believe you are who you are and you can't change that. Yeah. Whereas I can look at myself and I say, well, I'd like to be um, more extroverted and that's something I used to work on and then for some reason stopped or I still do a bit, but it used to be a real focus of mine. Uh, It, it might be li- worth listening to another episode of this podcast we did recently called About the Comfort Zone and Getting Out of Your Comfort Zone because there's a few crossovers here. And I was talking about personal development and how to like push and grow yourself in these areas. And it is something I believe in a lot and a lot of um a lot of what I want to do is build myself and make myself a better person. And I think I do achieve that. But I could have achieved so much more. <laughs> and that's part of it. But I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be down. I'm not trying to be depressing. Uh it's just is the time of year and let's not get it wrong, like a lot has been achieved in the last year. As I said, all those targets that were set have been done. It's just, but you know, we're talking about growth, we're talking about improvement. What can we improve going forward? When did you set those targets? Can we move to it? I'm not sure when I wrote, it was just on my About Me page on the blog, mm. and at the bottom I'd put, here's what I'm up to and what I'd like to achieve in the next year, but I hadn't dated it. Because something I wanted to ask you was, um, have you reviewed your New Year's resolutions post? Uh, I have, yeah. The problem with that one is I didn't really set any good goals. <laughs> so I set goals, but they're quite wishy-washy. Let me just bring it up. Yeah, I'd quite like to hear them. Because what do you mean by wishy-washy goals? Well, there weren't ones where I could say, I have achieved this. I haven't achieved this. Well, were they to spend more time developing certain skills? Look, here we go. 2018 goals. Sell lots of gin, write more blog posts, do more jiu-jitsu. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, yes, I have achieved all of that. No. So... <laughs> well, that must make you feel good, right? Yeah, but what does lots of gym mean? What does more blog posts? And what does more jiu-jitsu? I mean, I have done that. I wrote more blog posts in 2018 and in 2017. And I wrote, did more jiu-jitsu in 2018 and 2017. And I sold more gin in 2018 <laughs> and 2017. Not sure the gin counts as we launched in 2018. So here we go, look. Um, here needs a resolution. Start saying our gin to the public. Done. Yeah. Average at least five hours a week of jiu-jitsu. Done. Launch a table tennis business in India. Done. Do a new challenge to improve my managerial skills. Haven't done. Cut down on the amount of TV I watch or video games I play. Haven't done. Get back on track with my investments. Have done. So oh, that's, quite, that's quite good. I've done quite a lot of them. 
They're um, quite varied as well. They're quite varied. And you can tell I was thinking about similar things last year as I yeah. am this year because we're back to cut down the amount of TV and video games. And self-development. And Yeah, and more self-development stuff, managerial, um, which is something I've spoken about in previous podcast episodes. All right, let's get back on track. And let's go back to this idea of carrot and stick. Uh, so carrot being basically tempt yourself to be more productive by giving yourself good things like rewards and the stick kind of like beating yourself to do it (laughs) so i have been uh, historically really pushing the carrot side of it so i one big thing i did was i minimized the friction around work that means as little commuting as possible and i don't just mean with work it was the same with jiu-jitsu when we were traveling i would often look for accommodation that was near a gym so I knew that if it wasn't really walking distance or an easy to get to, I just wouldn't go. Yeah, which sacrificed my uh, my uh, exercise, which was yoga. <laughs> <laughs> Tended to be we were very close to jiu-jitsu and I had to travel very far for yoga. Yeah, but you like travelling. So that's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, something like doing this podcast is another example of that, where I was struggling to write as many blog posts as I wanted to because they all take quite a long time. Oh, this podcast, or podcast, podcast. I could just write a few ideas down and then record it. And it's interesting because you did also try this year using a dictaphone and trying to record you talking into it, but you didn't get transcribe. On, yeah, yeah, didn't get on that well with it. So actually, you've just tried another thing, which is the podcast. Yeah, and the first time the podcast was a lot harder, which was just me talking, and having you here makes it a lot easier, a lot better. Uh, I also tried to up the enjoyment of work itself. And one of them is quitting businesses I didn't really like and focusing on ones I do like. Yeah. Another one is by getting rid of all the stuff that I didn't like doing, answering emails, um, ignoring loads of certain jobs, not bothering with phone calls, not really doing cold calling and things like that. So I purposely kind of, even though it would have made the business better, I just purposely just got rid of them. Yeah. Because I knew I'd do more hours overall, even if... I was ignoring some easy kind of money that was there for the taking. And there's a, there's a lot of examples of this, but my kind of point is that the carrot has been eaten. <laughs> <laughs> From the carrot and the stick, like, that's that part done. Like, yeah. I need to now have a look at the other side and actually start doing the doing the stick a bit more. Um, and I think my goal for 2019 when it comes to this is kind of twofold. So there's one technique that I know works quite well. So I know I'm quite lazy, but I also know that I'm competitive. I don't like people seeing me fail. And I also don't like letting people down. So for me, setting challenges that I've told everyone about um, gives me kind of no choice but to do them because I have these two pressures on me that kind of override the laziness. An example of that was the expert in a year challenge where I spent every day playing table tennis. Um, one of the most unlazy things I've ever done in my life. Yeah, and drove you mad. And drove me mad. But it worked, and I yeah. did it. So challenges is one thing, and I've got a few challenges lined up about that, some to do with um, jiu-jitsu. There's also ones about this podcast, where I'm trying to do two podcasts, two episodes a week. Um which is such a high goal, even if I don't achieve it, I'm still producing a lot of podcasts. Uh, but then the other side of it is an idea that I'm becoming more and more kind of attached to, which is instead of setting um, exact challenges, because I'm quite logical, so I like to set a target and then a um, a path to get there. So an example would be, I want to become more extroverted. Okay, my way of getting there could be, I will go to... Uh, a pub every week and try and talk to free strangers yeah. so i'll set like very achievable goals along the path that i feel like would get me to the end goal instead what i'm thinking now is trying to change my mindset itself uh, and one of those is just to try and embrace hardship a bit more and look at hardship look at um, look at the stuff i don't particularly want to do as as a step on the path to that self-improvement as instead of just being a chore so i don't know whether you've noticed but i've been uh 
getting us out of the house a lot more, doing a lot more social events. Yeah, definitely. To going to... So it used to be that one of the requirements of going out for dinner with me was that it had to be walking distance. Yes. A uh, kind of un, an unsaid requirement. Well, I would say it was said quite a lot. But where uh, where you'd ask, oh, do you fancy going here? And I'd be like, oh, where is it? he go, oh, it's about a 20 minute drive. And I'd be like, oh. Not today. Oh, I'm a bit busy, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I should probably say in reply to that I'll go on my own then (laughs) Well, I never do (laughs) well I've been trying to say a lot more yes to things like that I've been I even I organised some social stuff this week you did Um, two things this week two more than in the last six months yeah (laughs) slash year yeah Uh, so just kind of seeing these things as 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 part of that self-improvement process so having that mindset change that saying, I suppose it's part of it saying yes to things, but part mm. of it is purposely taking the hard road because I think it will benefit me in the long run. Uh, I'm The problem with having a mindset change is if you just think about it once, it goes. Yeah. And that's why often just... setting set targets and goals works well. But, <laughs> but if you sort of, I suppose meditate on that mindset change or in my case my version of it, of it is think about it a lot so this isn't this isn't just something i've come up with today and i'm gonna be like yeah for like like most new year's resolutions where you're like oh i need to make some new res- resolutions and then you come up with something and never think about them again this is something i've been thinking about and tr- slowly trying to change my mindset and i know it's a long road but i'm also okay with that i'm okay with thinking about the type of person I will be in 10 years time if I can live in a in a certain way if I can change my mindset a bit uh, now that's not to say that that it's easy and that I'm successful one thing that I've never been able to do is is get up at a certain time in the morning have like an alarm it just doesn't work I just don't have especially in the morning where my weakest willpower it just doesn't work. And I've tried it before, saying I'll get up at this time every day. But, you know, it's all about little steps and about heading in that right direction. And I think this is something that I had almost consciously decided I wasn't going to do. I consciously decided that I'm lazy, I want a comfortable life, I'm going to make my life as comfortable as possible, which means avoiding hardship. So I think now I'm, I'm trying to have like a... a, a like a direction change on that. Um, There is a little contradiction going on here. So on one hand, with the carrots, I'm talking about removing hardship from work, stuff I don't like doing, so that it encourages me to do more hours. And on the other hand, I'm saying, try and embrace hardship uh, in order to improve myself as a person. And I get that there is a contradiction there, and that's a balance that I need to work out and I need to spend you know, just experiment with and get right. So that's not to mean I'm going to change the the podcast title is not going to change. I'm not going to call myself now the hardworking entrepreneur or anything like that. And I think compared to the, you'll still see on my monthly reports that I'm going to be probably well below. I'm, I'm not going to be hitting, I'm not going to be doing more hours than most people work in nine to five. But hopefully in 2019, what we'll see is me um, getting slightly more productive, doing slightly more hours, and um, hopefully growing as a person along with it. Sounds good. All right. Well, on that note, we're probably going to go off and have some mulled wine now. <laughs> have a very merry Christmas, and if you're listening to this in 2019, hopefully you'll be seeing some uh, some changes, some improvements. Woo-hoo. Until then, goodbye. Bye.